Mm. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun writing my novel. <laughs> More fun than people will ever believe. <laughs> This is my first novel. I've written my first novel in English because most of my family and friends live outside the Netherlands and they don't speak a word of Dutch. And they do use English. So I thought it would be a good idea to write my work in English so they could actually read what I've been working on. Well, and aside from that, my English is a bit better than my Dutch. I've, I don't feel comfortable writing in Dutch. That is a really hard language to nail if you really want to write a good book. Um, the inspiration of the good book was a set of uh, primary sources I had to use for my thesis at university uh, that made my head implode and it was a good idea to recreate the sources in my own particular way, just to get rid of any frustration I have ever felt writing paperwork during my time as a student and also as things happened in my life that I could use as inspiration in my novel. Uh, one of the inspirations um, uh, and the recurring theme in my novel is about relationships and mostly about whether or not to get married and that's pretty much based on uh, expectations from people around me about what I am supposed to do with my life. Another inspiration uh, I've used in my book is actually about hospitals and my time at the hospital, well more, more than one hospital actually. And um, yeah, it was a bit of an inspiration for a certain character in a certain chapter in my novel. I chose the medieval era as a starting point because that's one of the time periods I know quite a lot about, so I can uh, confidently mangle it up, cut bits out and really know when I am using facts and when I am starting to pump fiction into it. Uh, I was there from the very beginning of uh, the good book of Nightly Conduct and I remember how it started. Cindy was telling me about uh, the sources she was reading for her medieval studies and she was complaining about all the madness in it, including orders like uh, you shall not covet your neighbor's, neighbor's root vegetables and they weren't talking about theft. And just to get all of that out of her system she started writing a story about a knight and a squire who were attending a tournament. And my absolute favorite part in that story was the interaction between this kind of gruff, world-weary knight and his naive, romantic squire who was asking questions and wanting to know how things were done and how he was supposed to behave. And the other part that, uh, that I really loved were the letters from the parents of the knights to him, telling him how he shouldn't embarrass them and not to forget he was part of a large family. And we decided to, uh, well, lift those parts out and create a new story. I think as a writer, research is of utmost importance because your story stands or falls with the logic and the 
reality you can put into a world and the rules you add into a world and you abide by into that world. So you do have to know what is logical for your characters and what is possible within the world that you've built. So it's terribly important to really read up on your work. People who've ever read Chrétien de Troyes will understand why some people love to hate his work. Not to mention the fact that he was one of the first who would ever come to that 50 beep of beep, because yeah, he also has one really weird sadistic SM moment. It's all implied, but it's totally ludicrous. What if I were to put you in chains and in a cage? Well, my love, dearest lady, <sighs> love has already chained me to the wall of your <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the horse that was cleft in twain. Seriously, without the knight actually even getting one splash of blood on it. And then, of course, he got rescued by a maiden who was maiden no more. Honestly, every time Gawain ever finds a maiden, she tends to massage him back to virility. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I love to hate the writing of Croatia and the Trois. While she was writing that, this and I was reading it, uh, the cast is there was just uh, more and more added to the cast, more and more characters just showed up wanting a part and it was written completely out of order as all, all kinds of uh, separate stories but in the end they fitted beautifully together in this extremely funny, extremely unusual novel. I've never read anything like it. I've, I don't know many writers who make me laugh as much as she does and in the end quite surprising to both of us there's quite uh, quite a lot of character development as well kind of kind of well a sadness almost uh, underneath all the comedy and it's really worth reading on several levels but even if you just want a good laugh <laughs> It's great. <laughs> the favorite character in my book is a horse called Ritzard. I really do like uh, the things that a really silly horse tends to do at times. And the other characters are pretty much based on bits of my own personality. Well, hi, I'm C.D. Perch. <laughs> hi, I'm the writer of the Good Book of Nightly Conduct. Can't harm to have the name Perch mentioned. <laughs> yes, Perch. As in P-E-R-C-H. Perch, the fish.